Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Really excited to be bringing to you some day some information about the step sequencer in Logic. I don't know if this is something you're familiar with or not. It's uh, been one of the more recent additions, but it's been out for a while now. So uh, I just want to show you some tips and tricks with using the step sequencer. So if we're looking at Logic here, um, it's a really cool feature that has been added that you can actually step sequence down here at the bottom. And how do we make this a step sequencer? Instead of choosing the piano roll, you're going to come over and choose the step sequencer. Or you can right click on the track regions up here and say create a pattern region. And the pattern region is what is going to bring up this step sequencer down here and allow you to be able to do a lot of the step sequencing ideas, which are quite fun. Okay, so um, as you can see on this drum track here, we've got lots of different things that are available to us. Normally, you probably see yours come up like this. Um, we'll talk about that other menu in just a second. Uh, some things to note. This is one measure worth of notes. Each note right now represents a 16th note or 1 16th of a measure. So beat 1 is here, 1, E, and a, uh, broken into four parts. Here starts after this gap, beat 2, 2, E, and a. Uh, here starts another gap, 3, E, and a, uh, another gap, 4, E, and a. Uh. So if I want to put kick drums on all the beats, I would do this. Boom, boom boom and boom so now if you look up here you'll notice that that actually stretches for four measures uh, that you're seeing there so what is happening is it's taking this one measure and it's duplicating it four times if I'm just going to go ahead and make a quick backbeat Okay, so I have gone in and made a backbeat there. It's duplicated it across all of those. And if I play it, you'll hear it. Now, what if I don't want to have the same exact rhythm for all four measures? Well, that's where this little tool up here comes into play. So you can actually change it from 16 steps to 32 steps. And now you'll see that I've got two options up here for the places at which I can click to choose measures. So This is measure one, this is measure two. So now I have a two measure pattern that repeats itself. And if likewise I choose 64, now I have four different measures, so that first measure doesn't repeat itself. I can make completely different ideas in each measure, and that'll be a four-measure loop. So now I have a complete four-measure idea, or I can go back and have just a one. If I don't want this to, to be divided into 16th notes, I can come over here and change my divisions. So I could have 8th notes. Now each beat is broken up into two parts, as you can see. Still have 16 steps, but now this is two measures worth of sound. Or I can go faster and do 64th notes. Now that's just one beat that is represented there. Most people are probably going to keep it on 16th. For what's happening so um, that's a way to get in and do different things with drums um, a cool thing to note as well uh, down here on the hi-hat track if you want to make some hi-hat rolls which are pretty popular you can do this little drop down menu right here what and you'll see that it opens up a lot more options down here one for velocity and one for note repeating so you can actually go in and change the velocity of each note independently, which is really nice if you want to create a little more emphasis on beat one. You can certainly do that. Or you can come in here and grab and slide your mouse up and divide any single beat 
anywhere from one time up to 16 times. So, for example, you might do a little bit of hi-hat rolling like this. So it broke each note into two, then three, one hit, then five hits. Um, so you can get in and make a, a pretty hip sounding hi-hat roll using that. Um, if you want a place to start, you can show and hide the pattern browser. So there are pattern templates for drums. So you can go in and be like, hey, I want to have this height beat as the place I start. Or I want to have the line drum beat as the place I start. Or Midtown Summer as the place I start. So all sorts of different options that you have in here in that, which is really cool. Which leads me now to what if you want to use this for a piano, which, or any other pitched instrument. It's same idea. So right now I'm going to right click and make me a pattern region here on the piano. And you'll notice that it defaults to having one octave of a C major scale. Now you can change this to be whatever. You just simply click on the C2, change your notes to whatever you want octave wise and it's there that could be a little bit of a pain you could actually add another one too you could add any number of notes that you want totally fine there's a learn feature in there but this is where this little uh thing comes in super handy is in the template folder now i can come in and be like hey i want a major scale and bada bing bada bang bada boom i now have a major scale in c or it could be like, I want a minor scale. And the good thing is, it's now two octaves. So we've got this whole two octave major scale going. Um, you could do a chromatic octave. You could do a harmonic minor, Locrian, Dorian, all those things. They're here and easily accessible in their function and form to be able to get you to what you need to do. So once you've picked the template that you want to do, you can come back over again. This is broken into 16 steps right now. But the thing that scares a lot of people away from using this as a tool is that each one happens as a 16th note. I'm going to mute my drums right quick, and you'll hear this is rapid fire. And that doesn't really sound good if you're trying to fill up a measure. So maybe I just want this initial hit. Nope, that doesn't really do what I want it to do. I want that to like hold out for a quarter note or a full beat. So if you do the drop down menu here, you can go into the tie section and then click the little arrow at the bottom. And now you have turned this into a quarter note. And I'll add some more notes here. So, uh, this example now would be like that. Uh, you could adjust velocities again. Um, you can get in and have lots of different choices here, like if you want to make this jump an octave, or you can even make it change notes even on an individual line if you wanted to, like instead of G sharp, we can make that a D, and it's going to come out like a D. So you're not even tied on one line to be doing the same thing. So uh, pretty wild, pretty crazy, uh, different stuff when you really get in and drop down. But if you're not comfortable writing on a piano by uh, your native skill, then maybe this would be a really good option for you to be able to get in and experiment with the step sequencer here and find lots of different things that are really cool and uh, pretty easy to use. So hope you found this helpful. If you did, like and subscribe, uh, share it with your friends that are making music. Uh, thanks for watching.